Hello, I am Dr. Nayan. You are watching Biodesk. Today, in this session, we shall begin the chapter Invertebrates. Remember, Invertebrata is the major group of animal kingdom. These are the animals without backbone in their body. They do not have any endoskeleton. Among different groups of invertebrates, Arthropoda is the largest phylum. It includes about 80% of all different known animals. Phylum Arthropoda includes all different varieties of insects, some of which are beneficial and some are harmful. You must have used silk cloths. Silk cloths which are made up of silk threads. Silk threads are soft but strong natural fibers. In this lesson, we shall study two useful insects. One silkworm and another one honeybee. So, today we shall study about silkworm. Remember, silkworm produces silk threads. Rearing of silkworms for the production of silk threads at commercial scale is called sericulture. In our country, two different varieties of silkworms are popularly reared. They are seri silkworm and airy silkworm. This silkworm is classified as Kingdom Animalia. It belongs to the subkingdom Invertebrata. Phylum Orthropoda. Class Insecta. and type, we simply say silkworm or silk moth. Silk moth is a butterfly-like creature, nocturnal in habit. This one flying insect. Out of two different varieties of silkworm, reared in our country, are Seri silkworm and Airy silkworm. The scientific name of Seri silkworm is Bombyx modi. Bombyx modi and Airy silkworm is Atacus. Resini Bombyx modi feeds upon mulberry leaves. However, the dairy silkworm feeds upon castor leaves. Mulberry plants are perennial, small, bushy plants. So the farmer engaged in sericulture must have mulberry plants in his garden. Let us talk about external structure of silkworm. A mature adult silkworm measures about 2.5 cm in length. The body is elongated, cylindrical and segmented. 
it is of white shiny cream color the wings of adult silk worm are about 25 mm long they are weak flyers and they feed rarely in fact their mouth parts are less developed the body of silk worm can be divided into three different parts we say body has three divisions these are head thorax and abdomen the anterior head is small and hemispherical rounded it contains a pair of compound eyes a pair of small jointed hairy antennae and reduced mouth parts the middle part is the thorax it is small and segmented it bears three pairs of small jointed legs and two pairs of wings the wings are covered with shiny scales the abdomen is then segmented it is broader in females as it contains a large number of eggs and thus in case of silk worms males are smaller than females when we see the body structure of silk worm three different portions can be shown one is the anterior one head posterior abdomen and the middle one thorax so head thorax abdomen are the three divisions in the body the small head containing a pair of compound eyes a pair of short antennae antennae are hairy and mouth parts that is downwards cannot be seen in this diagram the thorax bears three pairs of small jointed legs we can show them like this and two pairs of wings the body is heavy 
so these are weak flyers and due to the wings the legs are not distinct they are hidden the abdomen is segmented ten segments are there in the abdomen and the postrain almost narrow you can draw the diagram of adult silkworm in this way remember the entire body is hairy small hair like structures are covering the whole body so this one adult silkworm remember males with narrower and smaller abdomen females with larger abdomen to keep more eggs thus there is distinct difference between male and female adult silkworms here when we want to level the different parts this is the head region right here head this one antenna compound eyes this is thorax and this one is the wing anterior wing posterior wing also called fore wing and hind wing this is the abdomen adult silk worm name of the figure now we shall see the life cycle of silk worm like other insects the life cycle of silk worm also includes four different phases these are egg larva pupa and adult the entire life cycle completes in about 45 days soon after emergence when the silk worms mature they perform mating union of male and female silk worms takes place by their abdominal ends and after mating the female starts laying eggs so one of the stages in the life cycle is the egg the adult female silk worm lays about 300 to 400 eggs in about 24 hours the eggs are laid in groups on mulberry leaves these are small white single cell stages of pin head size you must remember paper pin so very small if conditions are suitable means suitable temperature of 18 to 25 degree centigrade eggs hatch into larvae 
in about 10 to 12 days. During this, the white eggs later change into grey color. So next stage of the life cycle is larva. Eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae of silkworm are also called caterpillars. These are elongated, cylindrical and segmented worm-like creatures. At the time of hatching, the larvae are 2 to 3 mm long. Larvae are voracious eaters. Voracious eaters means they eat a lot. They feed voraciously on mulberry leaves. They have an average lifespan of about 25 to 32 days, means about a month. During this time period, larvae change their skin four times. This process of changing skin is called moulting. Larva moults four times and thus there are five different stages. These are called instar. So each stage of larval life is called instar. Remember, larva performs four moults and shows five instars, five different stages in its life. At the time of moulting, that takes place in about one day. During moulting, larva does not feed. It undergoes complete fasting. Four moults in average 28 days. So, each moulting at about one week. And finally, the fifth instar larva develops from the first instar stage. Fifth instar larva is about 75 millimeter long. So larva feeds a lot and grows a lot. This is the longest phase of the life. Now let us see the diagram of life cycle. Then we shall talk about the pupa and the adult stages of the life. So after mating, the adult silkworm lays eggs on mulberry leaves. Remember, the mulberry leaves are green in color and the eggs are led in groups. These are attached with the surface of the leaf by some glue-like substance, gelatinous substance. You can draw the leaf like this. Suppose this is the midrib. It 
eggs are laid on mulberry leaves because this is the food suitable food for the larvae the eggs remain attached with the surface of the leaf by some glue like substance from each egg a small larva hatches out larva elongated cylindrical worm like creature segmented creature that is a small in the beginning so when we see the different phases of larval stage remember five different stages they are called instars so first instar larva at the time of hatching is a small segmented creature after about 5 or 6 days first stage larva undergoes molting changes into second stage larva a little bigger feeding continues so remember this one first molting this one second molting after second molting that takes place in the next week the third stage larva develops so this one third in star larva then fourth stage due to next molting still bigger remember larva is growing and then this is the fourth in star larva first stage larva second stage third stage fourth stage finally fifth in star larva develops the fifth in star larva is about 70 or 75 mm long means about 6 to 7 7.5 cm long so a bigger one in its body distinct divisions are there they are head thorax and abdomen three divisions head with mouth parts for feeding on mulberry leaves thorax three segmented and abdomen 10 segmented so remember 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 in eighth abdominal segment there is a small horn like structure this is called central horn or dorsal horn you can draw the diagram like this and there are several legs in the body in thoracic regions we see thoracic legs and in abdominal region also abdominal legs so several legs in the body of larva this is the fifth in star larva we can say final stage of the larva fifth in star so remember this one first molting second molt third molt fourth molt so four molts and five different stages in the larva this is the longest phase of larva the fifth in star larva finally develops a special kind of gland in fact that one modified salivary gland that is the silk gland 
and it stops feeding the salivary gland start producing some special type of thread like structure in fact the secretion of the glands changes into silk thread in contact with air the body of the larva shrinks inside the silk thread covering covering of silk thread is called cocoon so next stage of the life which is called pupa develops inside cocoon inside the body of the cocoon the pupa remains hidden this one a little bit elongated segmented irregular structure having remnants of different other structures and the long fine silk threads which are produced by the larva covers the body from outside this is a protective covering this is called cocoon remember cocoon is the protective covering for pupa the larva changes into pupa pupal stage is non feeding stage and it is inactive externally it undergoes several metamorphological changes and in about 14 days pupa changes into adult the adult may be male or female depending upon the nature of the pupa when pupa changes into adult newly formed adult is called imago the imago produces a kind of lytic enzyme called cocoonase that dissolves one end of the cocoon in fact imago produces the enzyme cocoonase and due to this lytic enzyme the cocoon threads means the silk threads get dissolved at one end and through this the young silk worm comes out it has a small body a small wings and small legs this young adult newly formed adult called imago after drying the wings it starts flying and changes into mature adult thus the entire life cycle shows four distinct stages we say eggs larva or larvae pupa and adult this is all about the life cycle of silk worm and remember here the main points eggs are non feeding eggs need suitable temperature 18 to 25 degrees centigrade to develop into larvae if conditions are suitable eggs hatch into larvae in about 10 to 12 days 
larvae also called caterpillar live for about one month 25 to 32 days during this five different stages are seen and the last stage that is the fifth instar larva starts producing silk thread the silk thread is wrapped around the body and larva changes into pupa thus the covering of silk thread forms a protective covering for pupal stage and silk threads are obtained from this cocoon some of the pupa are left for normal development pupae develop into adult in about 14 days pupae non feeding stage but pupae also need suitable temperature and moisture similar to that of eggs pupa of silkworm also called chrysalis so now see the main points about pupa larva changes into pupa this one elongated conical irregular non feeding stage pupa of silkworm also called chrysalis it is almost golden or light brown color it is non moving stage that remains protected inside cocoon pupa changes into adult in about 12 to 14 days and next stage the adult remember newly formed adult is called imago it produces a lytic enzyme that dissolves one end of the cocoon after drying the wings it grows into mature stage the adults have an average life span of 5 to 7 days after becoming mature they perform mating and after mating the female continues to lay eggs thus life cycle continues now about the economic importance of silkworm remember silkworms produce silk threads 
and the silk threads are obtained from cocoon. This cocoon is formed by fifth instar larva. For obtaining silk threads, the cocoons are kept in hot water or hot air. Due to this, the glue-like substance between threads dissolves and fine silk threads are obtained. A single cocoon may produce 1000 feet to 1000 yards long silk threads. Silk threads are highly valuable of high market value. These are light, shiny, soft and durable natural threads. These absorb sweat easily and so considered good for skin. If pupae are allowed to grow into adult, the long threads of cocoons are damaged and that is why for obtaining silk threads, cocoons are boiled in water, hot water, or kept in hot air. During this, pupae are killed. But remember, all the cocoons are not sold out, not kept in hot air. In fact, some of the cocoons are kept and pupae are allowed to develop into adult of new generation. The cocoons and the eggs both can be kept in cold places to delay their developments. According to the requirement, eggs are kept at room temperature and similarly according to market demand, cocoons are kept in hot air. Otherwise, to delay the development, the eggs and cocoons both are kept in cold places, refrigerators. This is all about the structure and life cycle of silkworm. This much for today. In our next session, we shall study another useful insect, honeybee. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. Do like and share this video and subscribe our channel. See you in the next one. Thank you.